Loops feel transitory in a team's chat. They tend to drift up with the conversation as the conversation gets busier and people reply. You can pin a loop to the chat, and that will make the loop easier to find when you return to the chat. Uh, you can just click on the, the pinned at, at the top of the chat, and you'll jump straight to where that loop is in the conversation feed. However, the loop will still drift up as the conversation continues. So, this is one problem we have. How about whereabouts the loop file is? And where can I find it? Can I share it with others? Can I add it to another application or maybe share it with my team? Here's a few simple tips about finding, sharing, and referring to loops so that you and your team members can continue to collaborate without trying to search and find that loop. We'll start off with looking at pinning a chat. And I've got a chat running. Uh, it is a chat that is actually attached to a meeting. And if this meeting got or chat got a little busy like it usually does, let's just add a couple of uh, replies in here to, to do that. And something here from Laura. Right, so already we can see that the, the loop has disappeared off the chat feed. How do we bring that back so it's easy for us to find it? Well, first of all, we talked about pinning the loop in the chat, so let's have a look at that. We'll go back up to where our loop is, and just like we can pin a response in a chat feed, we can hover over the top right-hand corner and then choose Pin. So that's going to add a pin at the very top of our chat, and if we were partway through a long conversation thread, we could click on the pin, and then it's going to bring us straight to that loop. But that doesn't help us because it's going to continue to drift up if this conversation is continuing. Uh, look, another way that we can bring this loop back into view is we can copy the link. So you copy it from the top right hand corner of the, the loop again. And let's say that this was much further down the thread. Um, we can share that back into the chat, copy and paste. And this is still the same loop, right? It's just uh, as we send it, it's almost like it's bumping it to the top. Two ways to do it, but we're still not really solving the problem of it continuing to drift up if we're using chat to communicate while we're working on the loop. So here's another way to, to deal with this too. Let's go back over to Laura. And Laura's in the same meeting, in the same chat. She's going to click on the top left-hand corner this time. This is the name of the loop, the title. And this will open the loop within a separate tab. It's going to open in office.com and so she can work in a full screen experience of the loop and she can continue to add content and add other components there as well. So that's great. So another way that we could potentially make this easier for people to find is if we go back to Daryl who is within the meeting, um, he can copy the link to the loop and then within the loop, uh, rather within the Teams meeting, we'll go into the Teams meeting details, there we are, and we can add it as a website. So I'll just do this again. Click on Add a tab. We'll add a website. And paste the link here. Okay, we'll try a different name. Loop Notes. Save. Okay, now, it's not the smoothest experience. You have to sign in because website tabs are like that within Microsoft Teams. And I hope to see in future that there'll be a tab type especially created for sharing loops within meetings. Maybe there's another way that Microsoft plan to do it. But, you know, we'll sign in and we can get access to that loop. So that's another way to do it. How about sharing the loop from, uh, from the chat and into an email? We'll go over to Laura's experience again, go into the uh, loop chat, and we'll copy a link to it, and let's jump into an email. So we'll start a new message. Send this to different people that are in the meeting, Matt. And so one easy way that we could do this is we could say these are 
loop notes from our meeting. And rather than hyperlink, or rather paste in that great big ugly looking link there, at least it does that, um, I like to hyperlink so that I'm adding some link to the intentional text that I want to use. Um, so that way, loop, loop notes from our meeting, that works. So that's one way to do it. Another way is that we could go into Paperclip and we could browse cloud locations. Uh, so actually, let's do that from Daryl because I'm the one that created the loop, so uh, that would be the right place to do it. So we'll go over to a new email and we'll uh, also add Laura and Matt and we'll add a attachment. So this is going to be a cloud location and I know I've added it to a meeting so it's a private meeting and it will be in my uh, Microsoft Teams chat files. So we'll find that folder. There it is. Double click. And there's our December content planning loop. And we'll click next. So this is attaching a linked file. It's not the actual file. We wouldn't want to do that because it's supposed to be powered by the cloud. Uh, and now uh, we can share that in an email and Laura can open that. So we'll just have a look at that experience. Note too that at this point, I can also change the permissions for that loop so that it's shared in uh, the way that I intend for it to be shared. But we'll send that off quickly. And go over to Laura's experience. Let's have a look at what comes into Laura's mailbox. Okay, so there's the message. There's a uh, linked attachment. Now one thing that we find here is that my natural inclination is to click on the attachment and Outlook has a way of previewing files. So it can do this with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and it opens up and you can see the file without actually leaving your email. You can have the conversation alongside the content. Outlook for the web and Outlook in general is not ready for this experience yet. It's trying to use words to open up the, the fluid file, the, the loop. Uh, so the better way to open that up is we'll click on the down arrow, see some more options, and we'll open it in a new tab. And so now what will happen is it will open up in office.com where we can see again that full page view and we can start to collaborate on the loop. So the preview experience isn't working in Outlook at this stage. Um, I expect we probably won't even see that, that it will be that embedded experience of having the loop within the body of the message and we can adjust it from there. And then if we needed to go to full view, we'd be able to click that top left hand corner and open it in full view like we can see here now. So that's uh, how we can share it from within an email and a hint as to what is coming with the email experience. Now one of the things that I like about um, a loop being just another file within the Microsoft 365 experience. When we go to office.com and our landing page, then we can actually see all the loops uh, that we have been working on recently or ones that have been shared with me. You can see Laura has actually seen it uh, appear in her recent files because I've mentioned her and she's also contributed to it. So that's her experience. Something else that uh, is happening now is if we go back over to my view of office.com, this is the new experience of working with files within office.com. It's a far better way of perusing the files and recent files and managing that content um, with different sorts of filters. So again, you can see the December content planning loop is right there at the top. It was shared and I shared it and I can access it quite easily. And there's all the other loops that I can find there too. Maybe, maybe we'll see a, uh, a filter down the side here of being able to find all just the loop files and that would make it easy for us to just focus on the certain content that we're trying to find. But as you'd expect, you click on the, the loop file uh, and it's going to open up in office.com, full page view, where we can start to work on it. So you can see it is just another file within the space of Microsoft 365 and it's going to operate that way. 
the experience of working with these files is going to improve, uh, especially as we start to see the, uh, the full Microsoft Loop application come. But uh, for now, at least we can open it up in office.com and still work with it as a full page file and not be restricted with space. And if we needed to add more content and other loop components, forward slash, we've got all the other components that we can add in there too. There's one other thing that I want to show you before we kind of finish off this discussion um, is how about where these files are and can I shift them into a team so that it's available uh, within my team environment rather than it's sitting in my OneDrive. So it is in my OneDrive at the moment. What can I do here? Well, we'll click on um, the drop down to find those files again. We'll go back to the Teams chat folder within my OneDrive. And I don't know how many people actually use this, but they really should use it a bit more. It's been able to move files from your OneDrive and into your team so that you can uh, share them with them. So we are going to move that file. Uh, we'll go into the dots menu for the, the loop and we'll choose move and then we'll find a location for that. Just find the right team. So there's our engineering team. We'll shift it to there because I've been working in there recently. And into documents and we'll find, let's see, we'll just share it within the general channel and move it there. Now you notice that the file, as it's warning there, um, contains properties that will be lost in the new destination. Uh, so it is a, a loop file, it, it's behaving as a loop, um, but as we move it into a team, it's going to behave slightly differently, uh, and we expect that once the loop experience is fully available in the team, then it will be fine. Uh, so let's move it over to there. What I have done is I've actually done this to share notes with team members, um, and that has been quite useful. So we'll go into our engineering team and into the general channel. We'll go into files and you will find, there it is, December content planning loop. Um, and we can copy a link to it or we can start a conversation about it. Let's do that just to bring it to the forefront of what's going on. New conversation. Loop notes from content planning. And we'll browse and attach that as a link. So one way to do that, or you can of course copy and paste the link in and hyperlink it like I did with the email. So there you go, you've made it available to your team and now they can open it up and, and work on that as a file together as a team. Um, so great way to, to bring that into a collaborative space. And again, this is how I've been doing that with some of my team, but sharing notes and using this in, in place of where we might usually use OneNote. So remember, loops are just a file, um, just like Word, PowerPoint, OneNote. And so you can treat them the same uh, to an extent. Uh, we will expect to see some more loop integration and loop aware experiences where we can embed them and use them within our favorite apps. Some of the tips that I showed you feel a little like hacks, like they're not quite complete and not a smooth experience. It's just hinting towards what we can do, and I'm just showing you that there are some ways that we can collaborate with uh, a loop today if we shift the file around or the way that we refer to it, promote it, and share it. I'd like to thank Ian Morin and John Moore for inspiring this video with a couple of their questions and discussions in the community. And we do have a Microsoft Loop user group on LinkedIn, and there's a number of other resources. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can find out those resources and how to join the Microsoft Loop user group. If you're keen to see more of this kind of content, then you know where to find me and you know what to do. This has been Daryl as a service at your service. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.